let's go ahead and do a backward design plan together. As we go through this plan, I really want you to think about being in your brainstorming brain and not so much the details. The backward design plan is for you to get all of those ideas out there and then refine them and then complete your plan so that you can move forward. It's a great idea to share all the ideas that you have. It's easier to take away ideas when it comes time to create your content than it is to be short and have to come up with new ideas. So while you're working on your plan, think about adding all of the ideas you have and then deleting um, the ones that are unnecessary, you decided do not fit when you are turning in your assignment. All right, the first part you're gonna do is the module topic overview. And in this part, you're really going to just think about the idea of the module. It doesn't need to be more than one sentence or two. Um, and right now I'm going to do this in my brainstorming mind. So it's not gonna be a complete sentence, but if I were to turn it in, I would update it to a complete sentence. So for me, I'm thinking about creating a facilitation um, methods module for students to take that cover both in-person and digital methods. So again, my module topic overview is facilitation methods for in-person and de digital delivery. If I were to turn this in for my assignment, I would go ahead and just put my module will cover facilitation methods for in-person and digital delivery for the students in my class. Something as simple as that. All right, next up, let's talk about this next section here um, in our plan where we're going to talk about identifying the desired results, which is step one. So again, the backward design plan has three steps. In step one, we're gonna talk about those desired results. This is what our students should know, understand, and be able to do after the module has been taught. And but what I mean by after is I want you to think about once the module is over, once the course is over, and you set them out to do this without you there as a support system. So you want to know what your students should know, understand, and be able to do again after the module or the course has been taught. This is what your course will do or your module will do. You think of this in words of the goals. What are those main things that they need to do? All right, so if we're talking about a facilitation plan, I think for me, while I'm thinking about it, some of the things they need to do is they need to understand the best practices of facilitation methods. I'm just gonna put best practices for now. I think they need to understand the differences between digital delivery and in-person delivery. A lot of times I see, and while I'm thinking out loud here in my brainstorming mind, that we are not always using our tools correctly. So I think some of it will be to talk about how to use tools. And by tools, I mean PowerPoint. How do you build a PowerPoint? How do you... Um, stand in front of a classroom, for instance, on that one, as I'm just thinking out loud here, we have some people who stand behind a podium, some who move around a classroom. So what is the purpose in each and when is the best time to use that? How to use digital tools for digital delivery? I think also, I think that there's different lecture styles. So learning the lecture styles, presentations. We talked about PowerPoint, but what about adding here? I'm just going to add a little arrow here to PowerPoint. The colors of PowerPoints, the themes, the layout, the amount of content on each slide. If I was doing this again, I'd, I'd say, all right, here's what I have identified. Am I missing anything? Is there anything that might need to be on here? And as I read through them, I do notice that I'm missing this one important piece on how to engage learners in lectures. All right, let's talk about step two. In step two, we talk about how we're going to determine if the desired results have occurred. This is what you will accept as evidence of your student understanding and proficiency. 
So for example, these are your assessments and assignments. And yes, I do happen to see that typo on assignments. If you don't, I will get it fixed. Um, but this is what our students will do for proof. So for example, if I was to come to you and I was to say, hey, I know you talked in your course about the importance of the design choices on a PowerPoint slide. How do you know your students are doing it? I would say, well, here's an assignment that shows that the students learn from the content and I now know that they know how to do it because they turned this in, I graded it, I gave feedback. So when you're thinking of step two, these are always those proof items, those assignments that are graded. While in step three, we might move into some activities that are not graded, step two is always those graded assignments that you can share with somebody to showcase that your students know how to do it. So for example, I would have the students create a PowerPoint presentation. I would also have them present it in person and a digital one. I think another thing I might do is have them record themselves while presenting in a live classroom or at least a mock live classroom posted to the discussion board and then have peers review so that is one another assessment. Also have a discussion board where they are probably talking about those engagement practices. I don't quite know what it looks like right now, but that's okay because I know I will have them do a discussion board. The, it will be graded so it can belong here in step two. I could also have a quiz if I wanted. Um, I don't know if the content we're talking about really lends itself to a paper, but I could have them do a short reflection paper. So you can just continue adding lots of different ideas. Once you get your first round of ideas, read the question to yourself again, read your answers and see if something is missing. It's much easier to add to this and then take away. So maybe once I get started a little bit down the road, and I'm like, uh, I don't want a quiz. I can just cross the quiz out. Whereas if I only had a quiz written and then I had to think about new assessments, it would take longer. So while you're in the practice of doing this in the steps of backward design, add everything, remove later. So next is step three. And this are what learning activities and content will lead to the desired results. So you've identified the desired results in step one. Those are your goals, the things you want your students to do once they are done with the course and you are no longer there to support them. And the evidence, those are the assignments you're going to create. So if somebody comes to you and says, how do you know that they know what they need to know? You can say, here, I have. Now it's time for us to think about the content and the activities that align with Step one and two, these are the things that you are going to do to help teach the materials. So those are your teaching content, your readings, your lectures. There might be activities in here. So sometimes there are classroom activities. But one thing I want to caution you on is any activities in step three are not graded. They are practices. They are experiences but they are not the proof that you are going to collect for step two. All right, so what are some of the things we could do here in this section? So I know we will have some video lectures because it's an online course. I think I'm gonna have those lectures on digital facilitation and on in-person facilitation. And then I think maybe I might have some websites that I know I, so they might be resource websites that I will link to in Canvas. I think that I will also have some lectures on designing PowerPoints, and those will include color, layout, content. I might show examples of good and bad facilitation, maybe even okay facilitation. Sorry, I wrote really fast there on that one. I know that I also have some websites that talk about color theory, but I think what I'm going to do instead on that is I would love to make an infographic and give an infographic on color theory. I have some websites on color blindness. 
um, so people can see what it is to be colorblind and how color really does. I think that might be it for now. However, I can always add to this, but this is just an idea of what you are going to do to teach the course content. This is the most important word, what you do to teach. If you do have activities in your class, you just need to remember that activities are not graded. They are practice-based. Just remember that for step three. I hope this showed you a little bit more of how the process works.